previous videos showed several screen controls that help in building the user interface, and the way to enhance the app's design with definitions in a design system object, as well as how to import a design already made by a designer in Sketch. This video shows that, in addition to the predefined screen controls available in the toolbar, it's also possible to create your own controls to enrich the user experience even further. Genexus allows you to create user controls from controls built by designers, or controls available on platforms of providers of user interface resources. These may be either native components of the Angular framework, such as PrimeNG, Angular Material, or Material UI, or HTML, CSS, and JavaScript resources from generic providers like Semantic UI, Vanilla Framework, or Bootstrap Component Libraries. In the design received from the designer, there's an option menu in the upper right. You will now build the menu with a user control provided by PrimeNG. In the provider page, you'll find several menu examples. The most suitable in your case is the menu bar. Here you can see the page with the data relative to that control. Below the Features tab, we find, for example, general information about the control, as well as how the menu would look like and the HTML needed to implement it. The procedure for creating the user control in Genexus that will be included in panel objects is similar to that of a web app built with web panels, as it was shown in other videos. You'll obtain the control's HTML and add it in the user control to be created. Then you import other resources, such as CSS libraries and so on. Create an object of the user control type and call it Travel Agency Menu Bar. The object has two sections with which you'll be working, namely Screen Template, where you'll define the control's HTML code, and Properties, where you'll assign values to some of the elements in the HTML. If we go back to the PrimeNG page and go to Basic, we can see the HTML of the menu bar control, so we copy and paste it into the screen template section of our control. Now, substitute the fixed data included in the HTML with elements that will allow you to load them dynamically with your own data, either fixed or from the database. Before the HTML that we pasted in the screen template, let's add the following bracket, bracket, equal to, lower than, percentage, greater than, equal to, bracket, bracket. In this way, we indicate the generator to interpret all the code written there as Angular code. We save and go to the Properties tab. We complete the code in this section by adding the property corresponding to the variable we added in the screen template and setting its data type as SDT because we're going to load it with the SDT from the menu. The data types that you may use are shown in the general documentation of the wiki user controls. Now, change the definition clause with auto equals false and add target equals angular. This is required for the UC to remain visible in order to be added in a panel object. Now you must add several lines to import components from the provider that will be needed to properly interpret the control. The first thing to add are the dependencies of the packages that will be imported. If we go to PrimeNG's website, primeng.org, and browse below getting started, a page opens with a user's guide for the library controls. Even though this guide depends on each vendor, they all have documentation showing how to get their components. In the installation section, download indicates which package should be installed with npm. This package is the one we need to declare in our user control as a dependency. If we go to the wiki page that describes how to use a user control in Angular and go to the dependencies section, we see the syntax we should use. 
we add the dependency to the Properties section of our user control with the data from the Vendors page. Note that we must take into account the version of Angular that we're using, because the controls we reference must be available for that version. In the wiki page that shows the requirements of the Angular generator, we can find the version used by Genexus. In addition, the version used by the vendor for the controls is shown in the upper right corner and also in the footer of the control page. If we go to the configuration section of getting started, in the import part, we see the module we need to import. Here's a generic example. So to know which modules we need for the menu bar control, we go to the information page of the menu bar control, which is further down in the left menu, below the menu section. Note that the module we should import is the menu bar module. Front-end generators, such as Angular, contribute with advanced ways of including external resources using the import sentence. This declaration may be used both for including JavaScript modules and for including other types of resources, like images, SVG files or style sheets, through a package as Webpack. In the wiki, you'll find the syntax to use in Genexus for the import. First, there's a description of the various syntaxes of the import command, and below are some examples of their use. You may choose any, because in this case there are no special requirements as to where the code generated must be. Adapt the wiki example to import the menu bar module module from primeng slash menu bar and add it to the properties window. We go back again to the installation page of getting started and see that it says we should also load CSS code. Go to the wiki again to see how to write that in Genexus using the style clause and detailing the path where the CSS necessary will be located. Now that the definition of the user control is complete, save, and you'll see that the travel agency menu bar user control has been generated. Now proceed to include it in a panel object. The best place to include a menu is in a master panel object, so that the menu is present in all of the app's screens, ensuring quick access to the various parts. So, open the master panel travel agency object you had built. You'll see that the travel agency menu bar user control that you created appears on the toolbar. So now, you drag it to the form. A user control called Travel Agency Menu Bar 1 is created. And since you don't need the table to the right of the logo, you just simplify the design a bit. As mentioned, the menu items are loaded using an SDT. To know the structure we have to give to the SDT, we return to the menu bar control documentation, and in the API tab, we see the menu item documentation with its properties. There we see that a menu item has an ID, a label, an icon, a command, a URL, and so on. So we can create an SDT called menu item of collection type. And in each item, it has a label of character type and a URL, which will contain the URL of the object that will be invoked when we select the menu. Every API of each provider is different, so you must refer to the provider documentation to see how you set up your user control and which structures you must use to load the data needed. Now, let's go to the variable section of Master Panel Travel Agency. We create a menu items variable of the menu item data type, which is the variable based on the collection SDT. Then we create a menu item variable to which we'll assign the menu item dot items data type where we'll load each menu item to later add it to the items collection. 
we open the events section of the panel and add a client start event, where we'll write the code needed to load our menu items collection. Now go back to the panel's layout and select the Travel Agency menu bar 1, User Control. In its Items property, select the Menu Items variable. This is informing the user control where it must search for the data to show the items. To try this, open the View Home panel that was the main object you created, a startup object, prior to using the design sent by the designer from Sketch. Remove the icon and assign the master panel property with master panel travel agency, which already includes the icon and the menu. Right click on the view home panel and select run. You'll see the view home object opens up, showing the menu on the screen's upper right. When you drag the mouse over the buttons, you'll see them change in color as you go over them. This is to indicate the one that will be selected if you click. You will not assign objects to the menu here because you already have the menu that you will actually use, that is, the one created from Sketch. The use of user controls in an app generated in Angular implies certain considerations inherent to the framework's architecture. So, you must refer to the documentation of each user control provider or, if you set up your own, then you should consider a way of including the modules, styles, and other components necessary. The possibility of defining your own user controls in Genexus, instead of having only the standard controls, allows you to significantly increase the user experience of your apps. It also makes it possible to use creations from a variety of sources and include them in your development. In further videos, you'll also see how to include other external functionalities accessing APIs.